What is up everybody? Thank you for joining me again for another cocktail of creepy and a mix of the macabre. If you're joining me tonight, you better be ready for some creepy, creepy videos because I have searched Japan's deep web for some very morose sites. On top of that, we've got a little bit of ghost hunters and their adventures here in Japan. And finally, we're going to end with a little bit of a historical slash documentary film based on some of the horrific war crimes from Japan's very dark past. If you are here, you are here for fear, and your Saturday is about to become in... Osoroshi Saturday! First tale starts out with a little bit of darkness from the web, a very creepy little site made by an otaku who was obsessed with a girl. This guy was not just an otaku, but a hikikomori, which means a shut-in. And I think one of the things I need to explain a little bit better is when people say otaku, a lot of times they think they're just saying nerd. But otaku actually means mania. So you can be a blank otaku, for example, if you really love Pokemon, you'd be a Pokemon otaku. This person was an otaku, but an otaku for a girl. Now, this site pretty much covers his obsession and how deep and dark he got into this girl. Now, apparently what had happened was he began to send her at first very romantic videos, clips from his favorite romantic comedies and stuff like that, but his life became more and more shut in and he started to break away from what is our reality, from our social norms, from even interacting with people. And eventually his videos gradually became darker and darker, covering everything from talking about the girl he loved for hours and hours and then sending her the videos of him talking about her, singing songs that she liked and singing along with them in a horrible chorus. On top of that, even getting into a creepy point where he started to become a different personality, a person who he made up himself that was obsessed with this girl, and that person was called Frank. Now this is, for us, a very normal, typical name in America or any other Western country, but here he became a person he called Frank because that's not a typical name here in Japan. He separated his own personality from this one and began to record these super obsessive very dark, macabre videos. Now, apparently, after sending this girl video after video after video after video, only a few were actually collected when the police finally arrested him because this girl went missing, they never found her, and everything pointed to this guy. They never have found out if she was murdered or anything like that, but she did go missing. They never found her again, and on top of that, this guy was the only person sending tons of creepy videos to her. Take a look at a little bit of what was downloaded onto his website before everything was taken down. This has been uh, cached and kept for a while and can now be found and located on in Japan's deep web, as we would call it.
Next up, it's time for Ghosts on Camera. We're going to go ahead and follow some ghost adventures as people go ahead and document, tape, and record a series of ghosts caught on camera. Join me as I narrate this section of the video. All right, starting out first here, we have Persephone Number Station, a creepy recorded number station off an unlabeled AM or FM channel picked up by merely scanning through the airwaves. Now, those of you who don't know what a number station is, they are mysterious airwaves that are picked up by an unlisted station in which a person slowly or gradually reads off a series of numbers. Now, most times these numbers don't have any kind of connection to anything at all. Sometimes they have to connect with different dates, times, places, or even locations on a map. This one itself has not been diagrammed in any certain way to be connected to anything, but there was an actual code for this one that could be picked up through a signal through the internet when it was decoded and broken down from its binary code, not a process that I understand how it works, this is the image that came up from it. You can hear the numbers being read off at the same time. These numbers are also found in a very famous creepypasta called Fallout Number Station. You can check that one out too. It's actually connected to the game Fallout. This one here is through airwaves and internet connection and this is just straight creepy. If you have any sort of theory on the different numbers being read here, please tell me, we would be happy to hear. I'll just let the rest of this play out and you can listen. Next up, it's the ghost zone camera time. We're going through an abandoned house on this one, being explored by people who are just urban explorers, going through this abandoned, I guess, old school Japanese style house, and finding themselves more than they bargain for. As they record, you'll see they capture what seems to be a supernatural presence right as the camera goes past there. Did you see it? If you didn't see it, they're gonna go ahead and show you again. And even if they don't show you slow enough that you can find it, I suggest you just go back, do the video on a slow reloop, and go ahead and find it. Here is where it's at. All right, let's move on. Next up, we have a video from inside a taxi here in Japan. Now, that video is very grainy because the cameras put into taxis here are not the highest quality. They don't need to record super important stuff, and they're constantly always re-recorded over digitally. Now here you're gonna see in the back window a ghost slowly start to climb on to the trunk of this car. Now as you see it climb on, it'll slowly gradually climb up onto almost the window and then it almost seems to fall off. You can see hands right now and slowly dragging off, but not the natural way a body would due to the momentum and force of that taxi driving. Very, very creepy. I'm just going to let this one play out one more time for you. You can see here she goes climbing up and very, very creepy video. Whoop, there she goes and sliding off. Here we have what seems like nothing more than an innocent barbecue out in the middle of the countryside. People playing around, having fun, cooking meat as usual. Yes, this happens here in Japan too. They have cookouts, they have barbecues, especially during the summertime when there's usually Hanabi Matsuri, which is a fireworks matsuri, a festival if you will, if you don't know what matsuri means. During this one, while cooking on the grill, underneath you'll see a head, a ghostly head, seemingly hanging down from the bottom of the grill. See it there? Like a creepy clown's mask or some kind of strange face. Mouth open wide, eyes open wide, kind of a skeletal nose. 
Next up, we have a film crew filming a temple area which is supposedly haunted. The grounds of this temple are said to be haunted by the children who were brought there very young to train as Buddhist priests most times in Japan. Kids start as young as 6, 7, and these days about 12 to begin studying to become a Buddhist priest. It is almost a lifetime option for your career and your lifestyle. And it starts very, very young with a very strict training. They don't just take anybody. And if you are accepted into the school in which you become a Buddhist monk, it is very difficult. So there is many a tormented spirit at these type of places. And a lot of them are kids. And in this one, that's what we experience. Our reporter here is checking out the area before they do the story. And the cameraman who has the camera on her see something she cannot do to the fact that this is kind of a camera obscura situation where the camera itself has picked up a ghostly presence that she herself cannot see. You will only see it for a brief second on the first go through, but we're going to go ahead and show it more than one time here. Take a look at tiny hands that wrap around her. You'll see again as the cameraman suddenly moves his camera away from her and she looks confused. The reason is she doesn't feel all these tiny little hands that he can see wrapped around her. And if you take a very close look, you'll also see a small face, too, connected very close by the rest of these hands. Did you see the hands there? If not, I think we've got it one more time here. We're going to slow it down a whole lot more and let you just look. Did you see it? If not, it's okay. One more time. Hands. Little face that comes out. You can see those hands wrap around her. Very, very creepy little image. All right, what do we have next here? It is another urban explorer going around a school. They hear a knock on the door. His friend says, shh, be quiet. I think somebody's in there. And his friend records a ghost at the top of the door. Very, very visible ghost. And they are creeped out. Um, next we have a cell phone and this cell phone was taken to a wedding at a temple that was supposedly haunted she accidentally left her cell phone with the camera on in the bathroom while she was there she couldn't find her phone for a while and when she finally did find that she had left it in the bathroom she found it had recorded a ghost on the mirror in the bathroom and that's what she saved here on her phone she's kept this very old phone for the fact that it does have this video on here here are some of the pictures from the actual wedding as you can see it's the very old school traditional japanese style wedding these are the two people getting married at the time dressed in traditional kimonos wedding only kimonos and here is the actual mirror where her phone was left next to and you'll see a face show up in there that does not look human it looks a very ethereal in its presence and what they're gonna do is show you one more time the pictures and then go through and show you the ghost movement that they saw inside this mirror it turns around and looks straight at the camera when possibly the presence sense that it's being monitored in some way and there you see you almost can't even tell that something is there. We can't really sense the presence until the movement actually creates a shape that gives us kind of a facial image. Very creepy. Might be totally fake. That's up to you. I always leave it up to you, my audience. But nonetheless, a very creepy face. Let's move on. What's next? We have another video of people here at a post-earthquake situation they're helping some people out who have been caught. As you can see, they are going through and they are bringing these people out from the wreckage from this earthquake and that is where we spot our ghost. And if you don't see it, they'll show you again. Very short image at the top of the screen. As you can see, they've done us the favor of drawing in her face. And next we go on to a hospital waiting room. And at first it took me a while to see this one. It's very quick. If you look at the couch that's closest to the entrance, feet walk over the couch in a way that doesn't make sense. Look very close, white feet walk across. It's very quick. Watch it again if you need to. This one is friends just hanging out at their house, taking a video of course. And again, it's a very quick thing that happens in the background, but a lot more visual this time. If you look behind the girl, farthest in the back, a door opens and a ghostly figure can be seen in the door frame. Now, it's not the girl who's just entered the room. It's a totally different girl, actually. You'll see. 
and she's there for a second right where the circle is and then the door closes one more time very close up you can see her here when the door opens and she is a ghostly figure that has not been explained to this very day very creepy we do not know who this is not a person that the person filming knew so very creepy moving on we have a very creepy one i love a train track type ghost that crawls like teke teke if you don't know the story of teke teke please go look that up teke teke is a ghost that was cut in half by the train and now crawls as a torso on the ground and that's exactly what we see here very creepy take a look at the gate and this happens for mere seconds as the train's coming by don't see it the first time we'll go in closer because this is very grainy if you take a look it's a torso crawling underneath the gate. Can you see it? Just a head and two elbows and shoulders sticking out, crawling underneath the gate because that's how Teke Teke walks. Teke Teke is actually the sound of elbows hitting the ground as something scurries across on its chest or torso. Super creepy. Moving on, we got some friends just hanging out, taking a vacation in Tokyo. Now, Tokyo is a great place to visit, but it does have its dark side. High pressure and urban sprawl leads to a lot of jisatsu. Jisatsu is suicide, and that's what this is. Suicide ghost. Seen here, it could be a mannequin. Honestly, I look at this and I think there's nothing moving with this ghost. You'll see a close-up in between this guy's arm as he's filming. Take a look, and you'll think, why isn't this one moving very much? Maybe it was just a mannequin in the background wearing a kimono. Right? Take a look. What do you think? Let me know. Next up, we have a group of people visiting a shrine, and we've got a ring up here that they're walking through. And if you're wondering what this ring is, well, pretty much what it translates to is a wish ring. Every year, these are usually put up in temples everywhere. You make a wish, and your wish is usually granted as you walk through the ring. Now, the person was filming as they were walking through here with family, of course. And up in the right-hand corner of this ring, we see a ghostly hand gripping the side of the ring. And you can see it right there. It was just very short. Don't worry. We're going to give you another close-up. And... Here it is one more time, very close, a hand touching the right corner of this ring. Close up really quick as we draw near. As the people go right through with the dark blue and white shirt, there it is. Finally, for our last part tonight, we deal with a very, very dark subject. Now, some of you may know about the rape of Nanking, and for those of you who don't, that was a very terrible time in World War II history where Japan was actually trying to take over certain sections of China, and they did that in a very extreme, forceful, and grotesque manner by doing horrific war crimes against the Chinese people. To this day, there is still fighting between the two countries about admitting everything that both sides have done. Uh, Japan still isn't really happy about admitting that they've done everything because it is such a dark past for them. It would border on some of the same stuff that Nazis did. For example, there was death marches made uh, to be done by the people of Nanking, and these people were marched and marched until they would literally die or collapse from exhaustion. Those who couldn't keep going were either stabbed with bayonets or shot. Um, even more morose and dark things that got really deep in the darkest parts of humanity were the fact that due to the fact that the Japanese soldiers didn't want to waste any food on young children or babies sometimes they were thrown up into the air and caught on bayonets for a sort of game that these Japanese soldiers would play during World War II so it's very very dark now I'm gonna go ahead and warn you there's no jump scares because I'm not about jump scares that kind of stuff is not that scary to me but what I'm gonna show you is clips from a movie that was kind of I don't want to say a mockumentary because it sounds too silly, but a documentary done on some of the horrific things done by a special unit called Unit 731 during World War II. This unit was in charge of actually making chemical and biological weapons, 
and were assigned the task of making the equivalent to a modern day bubonic plague that they could use in pretty much chemical and biological warfare against the rest of the world. Luckily, they did not succeed in doing this. Um, but to do this, they experimented in the same way the Nazis did, taking people, putting them in concentration camps, and this is the Chinese people that they did this to, and pretty much testing all kinds of insane, crazy experiments on them. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and show you is clips from this movie and explain a little bit about these things that actually really did happen. I'm going to warn you now, it is graphic. I've actually cut out quite a bit of the most graphic stuff. It's not nearly as bad as the actual movie that it comes from called Men Behind the Sun. If you have a very strong stomach and really want to journey into the darkest parts of World War II history, you can watch this documentary. You can find it on YouTube. It's very easy to find. I'm not going to pretend like it's something so super rare or extremely hard to find. But it is super dark. It is super gory. It's super just absolutely intense graphical gore. Um, I, I just warn you, if that's not the type of movie you like, if you don't like anything with extreme, painful-looking, torturous situations, do not watch this, okay? You can actually skip this part of the video even if you want. I personally have uh, really, really toned it down. The most you're going to see is like a few dead bodies and that's about it, and they don't look super real or anything like that. This movie is actually quite old. Um, you know, this is actually even before the 1990s this movie was made, and it's a bit aged in the film quality as that manner, but it is still very dark, I warn you, okay? Let's go ahead, take a look, and I will narrate a little bit of it as we watch. All right, this is Nana-san Ichibutai. That means Unit 731, a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Japanese Imperial Army that undertook human lethal experimentation during the Second Sino-Japanese War. This was between 1937 to 1945 during World War II. It was responsible for some of the most notorious and atrocious war crimes carried out by Japanese personnel. Unit 731 was based in the Pingfang district of Harbin, the largest city in the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo. It was officially known as the Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department of the Kwantung Army. Originally set up under the Kempei Tai Military Police of the Empire of Japan, Unit 731 was taken over and commanded until the end of the war by General Shiro Ishii, an officer of the Kwantung Army. Between 3,000 and 12,000 men and women and children from which around 600 every year were provided by the Kempei Tai died during the human experimentation conducted by 731. So you can imagine how ferociously disgusting, grotesque, and horrible some of these experiments were. At the camp based in Pingfang alone, which does not include victims from other medical experimentation sites. Almost 70% of the victims who died in Pingfang camp were Chinese, including both civilian and military. Close to 30% of the victims were also Russian. Some others were Southeast Asian and Pacific Islanders. At the time, the colonies of the Empire of Japan and small number of prisoners of war from the allies of World War I and II. So very, very creepy and horrible war crimes that are known throughout history. It's really a dark, dark time for Japan. And at the very end of this, we see that they actually tried to get rid of all the evidence, such as one of their most brutal experiments here, putting a person in a pressure chamber and seeing how much pressure the human body could take before it was literally killed. Everything is pressed out of this guy. I highly advise you do not watch this part unless you have a very strong stomach. I'm not going to show the whole thing here, so don't worry. But as you can imagine, this part gets very, very gruesome fast. 
As I said, all the people here who were experimented on were done so in the most gruesome of ways, and then afterwards, all the information was attempted to be destroyed by Unit 731, some of which the people committed suicide even to keep information hidden. Unfortunately, many, many, many people were killed during this brutal massacre and experimentation in the high of 12,000 Chinese um, and 8,000 other prisoners of war and Russians and sometimes Pacific Islanders. There was at one point a revolt by some of the Japanese youth who were at this camp due to the fact that even they saw this as too ferocious, too brutal, and they felt as though they themselves had to take charge and try and fight back. They were shut down from doing this as well and some of them were even killed by their own fellow soldiers during this time. So it was just a point of absolute human depravity. There was absolutely nothing good that came from this. Unfortunately, it was a just really dark time in history for not just Japan, but the entire world in general. Men Behind the Sun, a really dark movie, made quite a while ago, nonetheless still very shocking to watch. It was touted as a instructional and educational film on this part of Japan's history. Unfortunately, a lot of people label it as an exploitation film due to the fact of all the gore involved. Nonetheless, there isn't sex in here, so I feel like it's not really an exploitation film. Just a very gritty, hardcore, real-to-life figment of what exactly happened. It is a very, very gory graphic and a no holds barred type film in which they truly show how brutal this situation was they don't sugarcoat anything in this movie so if you have the stomach i highly advise you watch it if you're not really too into gore or exploitation films i highly advise you do not watch it nonetheless a very educational film and one that lets us know just how horrible humans can be and what horrible mistakes we as human beings have made in the past. Alright guys, that's the end of tonight's videos. I hope you enjoyed. If anything you found, watched, was too unsettling, too scary, you shouldn't have joined Osoroshi Saturday. But I'm sure you were here for a scare just like everyone else. On our next video, we hope to have another J Vlogger on here. His name is Softy Papa. You can check out his videos anytime you want. And he will be doing a little bit of a special on a kind of supernatural experience he had. He is a J Vlogger who explores many different, very uh, Inaka countryside areas of Japan. And he's explored even some stuff like graveyards in the middle of the forest and abandoned buildings and mansions in the middle of the forest which is really quite creepy um, nonetheless most of his videos are nature related and he has some gorgeous gorgeous videos great camel work and he's got some great narration to go along with it I highly advise you watch his channel if you want to see more of the countryside of Japan hopefully on our next video he is here to talk about the experience he had one time while going on one of these adventures until next time, send some of your own videos in, please. Feel free to share your stories with me. The only thing I ask, and this is something I should have clarified a little bit better before, make them related or somewhat related to either Japan or Asia in general. I love all the creepy stories you guys send me. Your suggestions are great. But what we're looking for here, Osoroshi Saturday, is very, very based in Asian horror. And that's what we want to kind of stick to. I should have clarified that better earlier. My fault. I take the blame. Until next time, share your stories. Come along and let's have an Osoroshi Saturday. Yeah!
Myself. 